Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the parts of the reproductive system. So looking at the, the anatomy of the male and female reproductive system, looking at the different parts and what their role is within the bigger picture. So to start with we're going to think about what is the purpose of the reproductive system and how um, the different parts help to meet those needs. So firstly, we're thinking that the reproductive system, its purpose is the survival of our species, essentially. We want to be able to produce new humans, new generations going into the future. So the reproductive system that we have needs to do the following things. Firstly, we need to be able to produce sex cells, or what we call gametes. So for men, it's sperm. For women, it's the ovum, which is Latin for egg. We also then need to be able to facilitate the fusion or the joining of these two sex cells, we call fertilization, which is what produces the first cell of the new organism or the zygote. So the zygote is what will divide and develop to become the new human being, the baby. It also needs to provide a safe place for that new organism to develop and grow. Um, so the fetus growing inside the woman's body. And then finally, once that fetus is ready to enter the world, there's a way for that to happen, which is what we call birth through the process of labor. So now, firstly, we're going to start talking about the male reproductive system. So these are some of the parts of the male reproductive system. We have the testes, the, which is a, word, a plural word. The singular is testis. The penis, urethra, the vas deferens, epididymis, prostate gland, seminal vesicles, seminiferous tubules, and the scrotum. So what we're going to do now, we're going to look at a diagram that shows you where these things are, and then um, identify some of what their function is just quickly. And then after that, we'll have a slide with a table showing you um, what their role is that you can pause and copy it down. Okay, so here we have two views of the male reproductive system, uh, front on and then side on. Okay, so we can see um, we have the penis in the center. We have two testes contain, contained inside the skin sac that we refer to as the scrotum. The top of the testes, we have the epididymis. And then connecting from the epididymis up and around, we have the vas deferens, also called the sperm duct, sometimes as a nickname in English. That vas deferens goes up and through this is we have the pubic bone, which is part of the pelvis. It goes up and around and then it connects up to this tube, which extends from the ureter above that. So you notice that the ureter, if you look over on the left hand view, is what connects the kidneys to the bladder and then where the urine is stored. And then from the bladder, the urine would travel down via the urethra through the penis and out. Okay, and so we have the bladder, we have the ureter, and so the vas deferens taps into that tube, and then the urethra connects up through the penis to the um, to the outside world. Um, and so, and then we also have uh, what we call the prostate gland and the seminal vesicles. So we'll go through what they do in a moment. So essentially, the testis is responsible for production of sperm. Its job is to be like a factory, making sperm cells continuously, millions upon millions, all the time, uh, just in case they are needed for fertilization. But the thing is that, like with a factory, once those goods are made, they need to be stored somewhere else so the factory can continue to work. So what happens is the epididymis is the place where um, those sperm cells are stored. Um, so they're stored there, ready to be transmitted, ready to be passed along if needed. Inside the testis, we have a structure, you can't see on this diagram, but it's called the seminiferous tubules, which is where those sperm cells actually grow inside that structure. So it's like the assembly line of the factory. Okay, when it gets to a point where sexual intercourse is happening and the sperm are ready to be released from the body, um, they will travel up from the epididymis via the vas deferens towards, um, heading towards the urethra. Um, what we also have is the prostate gland and the seminal vesicles um, contribute uh, parts to what we call semen, which is the fluid the sperm will travel in to leave the body. So they will they will help to provide the water and nutrients and a, and a number of different chemicals in that mix that it will help the sperm to survive on their journey. And then um, via the process of ejaculation, they will travel through the penis and out. Um, and so that's essentially what each of those parts do. As you can see on the next slide here, we've got a table going through each of those different parts. Pause the video now um, to copy down this information. We're now going to move on to uh, thinking about the female reproductive system. So we have the vagina, the uterus, ovary, the fallopian tube, also known as the oviduct, cervix, 
and urethra. So there are fewer parts that we're going to go through with this today, but that means it doesn't mean it's any less complicated. Okay, so showing you a diagram showing you the front view and then side view, as you can see that all of the parts of the female reproductive system are internal as opposed to in the male reproductive system uh, where you have some external and some internal. Okay, so we have, uh, we have the vagina down the bottom, which is the external opening to the female reproductive system. Um, with, that connects up towards the uterus, this kind of V-shaped sort of organ up here with a cervix that connects between the two. The uterus is where the baby will develop. If, if an egg is fertilized by a sperm and then is implanted, ready to start developing, the uterus is where it will happen. Uh, if no fertilization has happened, then the, the uterus remains unused in that respect. Um, what we have also is we've got two ovaries, one on each side, which is where the eggs are produced, the ova, which is Latin for, for eggs. Okay, so that the eggs will develop inside those ovaries and one or potentially more eggs will be released um, every month during the process of menstruation or during that cycle. Um, sometimes more than one egg can be released and if that's fertilized, that's where you can get fraternal twins coming from. So the egg is released by the egg and it uh, by the ovary, sorry, and it travels via the fallopian tube down towards the uterus. Okay, so the, the egg just kind of travels, it meanders its way along, it's not propelled or pushed by anything, it just floats its way down. Um, inside the fallopian tube is where fertilization will happen. If there are sperm, they're ready to meet it and ready to fertilize that egg. If it's fertilized, that egg will travel down into the uterus and attach to this uterine wall. Um, so we're a really uh, where there's lots of blood vessels, lots of nutrients that are there, ready to nourish that that zygote, that, that fetus that will start to develop and allow it to grow and multiply to become a baby. If that egg remains unfertilized, it works its way out of the uterus, down via the vagina, and the uterus cleanses itself by removing that uterine wall um, and flushing it out, um, which is why what happens when we, our woman is getting her period. Okay, um, but you can see that all of the different parts are all very closely related together. The uterus is just above the bladder, which is just above this pubic bone, and then the, um, the vagina and all the, um, the openings are right down the bottom. Um, but seeing the, the, how close the bladder and the uterus are together is why when a woman is very pregnant, um, she not, needs to go to the toilet a lot. Because you can imagine something as big as a watermelon sitting inside the uterus here, squashing down on the bladder all day, all night, every day. Um, it can become very uncomfortable, and so that sort of pressure is is um, is why pregnant women experience that. Uh, on the next slide, we've got a table that goes through um, the the function or the job of each of these parts. Pause the video now to copy this down. Okay.